In this topic, we're going to look at proteins. So we're going to look at amino acids, polypeptides, and the structure of proteins. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to describe the structure of amino acids and peptide bonds, explain primary, secondary, and tertiary structures, describe the different bonds in a protein, and we're also going to look at how to test for a protein. So proteins are a diverse group of large and complex polymer molecules, and they're made up of long chains of amino acids. They have a wide range of biological roles, including structural. So proteins are the main component of body tissues. You know that you find them in your muscle, skin, ligaments, and hair. They've got catalytic roles. All enzymes are proteins, and they catalyze many biochemical reactions. They're involved in signaling. Many hormones and receptors are proteins. Also immunological, so all antibodies are proteins. And of course hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is protein and hemoglobin carries oxygen. So just take one moment to look at these different roles that proteins have. So here's a nice image to summarize what we've just seen. You've got enzymes, brain and nerves, so the iron channel proteins, blood, hemoglobin, hair and nails, muscles, cellular messengers, antibodies. Let's have a look at amino acids. Amino acids are the basic monomer unit. Mono means one, so monomer units which combine to form proteins. Each amino acid has got a central R group to which four different groups are attached. So that carbon in the middle is called the alpha carbon. The first group we're going to look at is the amino group. This is a basic group and it's how amino acids get its name. You've also got the R group and then you've got the carboxylic acid group. This is an acid group which gives the amino acid the rest of, it, rest of its name. The R group represents a side chain from the central alpha carbon atom, and it can be anything from a simple hydrogen atom to a more complex ring structure. Now we say that amino acids are amphoteric, a new word. This is because the carboxyl group is acidic and the amino group is basic. So the amino acid is both, both an acid and a base. Amphoteric compounds act as buffer solutions because they can resist changes to pH. This is important in cells because it helps to maintain a stable pH so enzymes can function efficiently. Let's have a look at how a peptide bond is formed. If you have one amino acid and it joins with another amino acid, the water group is removed and we say this is condensation. So the water group is removed and then you have a peptide bond forming. The peptide bond is actually a covalent bond between the amino acids. It forms between the carbon of one amino acid and the nitrogen of another amino acid. So when more amino acids are added to a dipeptide, a polypeptide chain is formed. A protein consists of one or more polypeptide chains folded into a very highly specific 3D shape. There are up to four levels of structure in a protein. You've got primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Each of these play an important role in the overall structure and function of the protein. So here you can see the different levels. You've got primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. And we're gonna look at each one in detail. So what is the primary structure of proteins? The primary structure of a protein is the sequence of amino acids in its polypeptide. A simple protein can consist of a single polypeptide chain. However, it's more common to find a protein made up of a number of polypeptide chains. The linked amino acids that make up a polypeptide have got NH and CO groups on either side of every peptide bond. Both of these groups are polar, so they can form a hydrogen bond with each other. This causes the long polypeptide chain to be twisted into one of two basic three-dimensional shapes. You get an alpha helix, the polypeptide chain is coiled into a cylindrical shape, and it's got hydrogen bonds holding it together. 
and a beta pleated sheet. The polypeptide chains are linked in parallel flat sheets, so it kind of looks like corrugated iron. Now the tertiary structure of proteins, when the helices and beta pleated sheets of secondary proteins are twisted and folded, they give an even more complex and 3D shape of a protein. This is known as the tertiary structure. There are four different kinds of bonds present. The strongest is the disulfide bridges, formed between the amino acids cysteine. They are covalent bonds and form very, very strong bonds, making the tertiary structure very stable. You've also got ionic bonds. They occur between carboxyl and amino groups that have not been involved in peptide bonds. They are weaker than disulfide bridges and can be broken when there's a change in the pH. And then you've got hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds result from the traction between the electronegative oxygen atoms on the CO group and the electropositive atoms on the OH group. Although they're weaker individually than in ionic bonds, their large number increases the stability of the tertiary structure. You've also got hydrophobic interactions. These occur when you have non-polar R groups that repel water. They'll interact towards the middle of the protein, away from the water. So here you can see the different types of bonds we've discussed. Hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interactions, and disulfide bonds. The one that's missing here is the ionic bond. Moving on to the quaternary structure of proteins. This is the interaction of different polypeptide chains. The chains are held together by hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, disulfide bonds and hydrophobic interactions. They can contain a prosthetic group. For example, if you look here, you've got hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made up of four different chains. You've got two alpha chains and two beta chains. And sitting inside those chains, you've got a heme group, which is called a prosthetic group. So how do we test for proteins? It's called the Biret test. What you do is you add equal volumes of dilute sodium hydroxide and then you can add a few drops of copper sulfate solution or a birate reagent. Sorry. This reacts to form a purple color if a protein is present. So what actually happens is the copper ions in the birate reagent associate it with four different nitrogen atoms in the peptide and this forms a complex that makes the solution look purple. So the more peptide bonds there are, the more intense the color will be. So what have you learned in this lesson? We've discussed the structure of amino acids, so you've got to know the different groups on the amino acids, and how peptide bonds are formed. We've looked at primary, secondary and tertiary structures as well as quaternary structures, and then we've also looked at the different bonds in these different structures. And we've also looked at the Barrett test for a protein. What color does the Barrett test turn? Turns purple. And that concludes our lesson. The end.